My people, when you reach level five in a skill, you have a choice between two professions. Depending on what profession you picked at level five, you will then have two additional options when you reach level 10. In this video, we'll look at what every one of those professions does, their benefits, and then finally, which professions you should be using in each of the five skills on Stardew Valley. Let's go through each skill one by one. And remember, if you already picked a profession and you wanna change it, you can pay 10,000 gold to the Statue of Uncertainty in the sewers. Rancher makes your animal products worth 20% more. From here, you can either choose the Coop Master profession and befriend Coop animals quicker, plus have twice as fast incubation, or you can go with Shepherd and befriend barn animals quicker, plus sheep will grow wool faster. Alternatively, at level 5, you could select Tiller, which makes crops worth 10% more. Then at level 10, your options are Artisan, which makes Artisan goods worth 40% more, or Agriculturalist, which makes crops grow 10% faster. As I talked about in my fertilizers guide, in some situations, Agriculturalist 10% faster growth rate will allow you to get an extra harvest in for a particular crop. However, most endgame crops that you'll grow don't happen to benefit a ton from this, and as such, it likely won't help too much. In contrast, the effects of Coopmaster and Shepherd will passively help you in the form of a hidden benefit that isn't stable anywhere in the game. They each increase the average quality of the animal product that is relevant to its profession. This translates to approximately 6.5% more profit per animal product, so while it doesn't make too much of a difference, it's still something to consider, especially if you have only one kind of farm building. My recommendation is that you choose Rancher at level 5 and then either Coopmaster or Shepherd at level 10, depending on which of your buildings you make more money from. But hold on, we can't ignore Artisan's huge 40% bonus, especially since most endgame farms make a ton of money by making wine. There's going to be one common theme when we consider all of the professions that increase sell prices of items. Professions like Artisan are only helpful when you actually sell your items, but not at any other time. What you should do is save all of your Artisan goods up. Then when you want to sell them, pay 10,000 to change to the artisan profession, sell your items, and then switch back to the profession you had before after you've sold the items. This will cost you 20,000 in total, but as long as the bonus 40% profit that you're getting from selling the wines is more than 20,000, then it's worth it. So to reiterate, have either the Coopmaster or the Shepherd profession normally, then switch to Artisan when you want to sell your saved up Artisan goods. The Miner profession gives you plus one ore per vein, and you can later pick Blacksmith to make metal bars worth 50% more, or Prospector, which doubles your chance to find coal. You can instead choose Geologist for a 50% chance that gems or geodes appear in pairs, then pick either Excavator to double your chance of finding geodes, or Gemologist to make all gems worth 30% more. Every time I've played this game, I've always gone with Geologist since gems were relatively expensive and I liked being able to increase my profit. But the later that you get into this game, the more valuable your time becomes. An extra 750 gold from a second diamond is almost nothing to me now, but having to spend days in the mines to get enough iron for a bunch of kegs is a big deal. The same is true of geodes. I used to like having the extra cash from them, but nowadays I just find it annoying to have to spend time to go crack them open. I suggest choosing Miner at level 5, then Prospector at level 10. Gems and geodes are only good for low-level money making and for gifts, but copper, iron, gold, iridium, and coal are helpful for years of gameplay. It takes a lot of material gathering to get the kegs, preserves jars, and casks that you'll want in the endgame, and these are some very helpful perks to save you a lot of time. Again, if you decide to sell any of your metal bars or gems, then you should save them up for a while and then switch to the appropriate profession and then switch back. Hey, if this video is helpful, you guys should consider subscribing or joining me on Twitch, thanks. Forester gives you 25% more wood when you chop down a tree. You can then pick Lumberjack to start receiving hardwood when you cut down regular trees, or Tapper to make 25% more on syrups. If you instead chose Gatherer, you'll have a 20% chance of getting a double harvest when you forage an item. At level 10, you can then pick between Botanist, which makes all foraged items iridium quality, or Tracker, which reveals the location of forageable items. Immediately, I'm going to rule out Tapper and Tracker as good options. In my experience, you don't tap trees for money-making purposes, but rather to get the maple syrup, oak resin, or pine tar that you need for things like bee houses or kegs. Tracker does have one good use though, but it's a bit niche. As explained by Mr. Penguin Panda, Panning is the way to go when trying to get the lucky ring, and the tracker profession will alert you to the locations of panning spots. Outside of this though, it doesn't provide much value. Gatherer doesn't just work on the occasional spice berry that you find in the wild. It works on salmon berries and blackberries, the forageables that you find in the mines, and even the seasonal seeds that you can plant on the farm. As a note, this doesn't work on grapes that you grow on grape starters, only the ones that you get from the summer seeds pack. Some people have even managed to make a decent chunk of change by using the botanist profession during berry seasons, coupled with the bear's knowledge, but I think there's a better route to take. I would again classify wood as one of the materials that it can't hurt to have too much of, and choosing lumberjack means that you won't have to make a trip to the secret woods every time you need hardwood. In my opinion, using lumberjack is the best profession to have 95% of the time with one exception. During the winter, there's only one way you can use the space on your farm to grow crops, and that's with the seasonal winter seeds. If you mass produce these seeds and replant them to make profit during the winter, 
then during your last harvest, it could be profitable to switch to gatherer slash botanist. This is a very specific situation, but I did want to mention it. Fisher makes all fish worth 25% more. You can then up that to 50% with the angler profession or pick pirate and double your chances of finding treasure. If you go with trapper, crab pots will only require two copper bars and 25 wood to make instead of three iron bars and 40 wood. Then you can choose Mariner to make your crab pots stop producing junk items, or Lore Master makes it so that your crab pots don't require bait. If you decide to go the Trapper route, Mariner is almost certainly better than Lore Master. Bait only costs 5 gold, it takes a negligible amount of time to put into the crab pot, and you'll get better items by avoiding junk. At the same time, I don't know many late game players that feel like even bothering with the crab pot, so I think that Fisher should be your level 5 pick. Early game fishing is a great money maker, and having that 25% additional cash can be nice. Once you get to level 10 fishing and you're a bit further into the game, you'll probably benefit more from having the extra treasure chests. Still though, the later that you get into the game, the less relevant fishing becomes from a money making perspective, so I think this one is largely up to personal preference. With Fighter, all of your attacks will deal 10% more damage and you get 15 additional health. Brute further increases your damage another 15% or Defender gives you an additional 25 health. If you choose Scout at level 5, your critical strike chance will increase by 50%. From there you can pick Acrobat to have the speed of your special attack cooldowns, or Desperado to pack even more of a punch with your critical hits. I think the choice for combat is pretty cut and dry. Go with Fighter and Brute. In this game you'll only ever take a maximum hit of around 40, and without Defender your max health is still 155. You're better off taking the damage bonus from Brute and killing the enemies faster, effectively avoiding damage anyway. The Fighter-Brute combo is better for almost every fighter, regardless of your style or weapon of choice, with one exception. If you've made a critical hit build by taking every critical hit chance slash critical hit damage upgrade that you can get your hands on, then choosing Scout and Desperado is best for you. Desperado will take the final damage of your critical hit and double it, and most monsters won't even survive one hit. Remember, this is only worth it if you've used rings, forge upgrades, and the proper weapon to make your critical strike chance high enough to be meaningful. But for the majority of players, Fighter and Brute will get you where you need to go. That's all I've got for you guys though. If it was helpful, consider subscribing or joining me over at twitch.tv slash unsurpassableZ. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.